first thing I should say is that um, yesterday uh, I was in the session on um, I forget what the session was called but uh, 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 Karadok's uh, paper suddenly um, kind of reminded me that um, lots of papers at this conference uh, concern Brexit but um, nobody was actually um, saying anything about it so um, I rushed back and uh, decided to change the um, title of my paper hopefully which one do I press to change the slide uh, spacebar enter so this is the new title for my paper now um, Brexit the elephant in the room and um, my contention is going to be that one way or another, whether you feel that it's personally affected you yet, but uh, Brexit um, is going to affect us all in all spheres of our life, and uh, in particular as archaeologists, uh, whether you're an academic archaeologist or a, a field archaeologist, um, somewhere along the line it's going to um, impinge upon you, and if, uh, if not sooner, then uh, certainly later. Um, I was in Sweden on the uh, 24th of June, and uh, one of uh, four British archaeologists on a project uh, with about 50 archaeologists in total, um, obviously a lot of Swedes, some Danes, some Norwegians, Germans, Maltese, uh, Estonian, um, a complete kind of mix really and uh, I guess indicative of uh, a lot of projects now um, across Europe, uh, certainly in this country, uh, you know, where we are seeing archaeologists as a result of freedom of movement and uh, easing of uh, controls on uh, visas uh, are able to move around and, and pretty much get work where, where there is a demand for archaeologists. Um, so I sat there in my Swedish living room watching the BBC World News, um, first amazed and then shocked and then kind of like that last scene from the first Planet of the Apes movie sitting there thinking to myself God they've actually gone and done it. Um, fortunately the really good thing is that uh, on that particular day in Sweden it was a bank holiday so uh, me and the other three Brits then went out and got pissed <laughs> which uh, seemed to be the appropriate response. Um, Whilst there, we obviously, you know, first reaction, the worries that you have when, uh, you know, a decision that seems to be so momentous but um, so sort of um, vague, really, in its, uh, its potential, um, sort of started to um, sink in. Um, in my situation, you know, I'm an archaeologist who works both in the UK and in Europe. Um, I have uh, friends and colleagues who do the same thing. Uh, I have uh, colleagues from the EU who come and work in this country, um, some on a permanent basis, some on an occasional basis, the same way as I do the other way around. Um, we work for all kinds of different institutions, commercial archaeology, for universities, for national bodies. Um, our funding comes quite often from a combination of EU funding or it comes from commercial development that is inspired by EU initiatives in one way or another, be it infrastructure or uh, development zones uh, and what have you. And I don't think any of us would claim that uh, the EU as it stood before the 23rd of June or as it stands now is a perfect institution. Um, no, I mean there are obvious changes that can be made which would benefit I think the organisation and, and, and the 500 million odd citizens that it, that it claims to represent. Um, although I didn't know it at the time, I was in fact displaying all of those signs of refusing to accept the democratic decision of 52%. I was a Remainer, a Remaniac I've, I've discovered this weekend. Um, so six months on in a more reflective mood where, where do I think that Brexit sits now? Well clearly it's a political decision and a moment, at the moment a decision that's stealing all of the headlines 
Uh, to my mind, though, it's only one small part of a much larger political process. It is a, a process that in its post-truth reality not only appears to sanction irrational decisions, but in its justification seeks to undermine expertise and professionalism. And if there's anything that um, archaeology has tried to establish itself over the last 30 years, it is that we actually bring to our subject expertise and professionalism. Uh, it describes any form of reflection as elitist and uh, rather ironically as non-democratic. And um, this is why I think this is where we should start to worry uh, for ourselves as, as archaeologists. Um, what do archaeologists think? Well, um, almost immediately after uh, the 23rd of June, um, I got in touch with uh, the CIFA and um, asked whether or not they would be interested in, in conducting a survey uh, because despite the fact that, you know, talking in pubs, talking to colleagues, you, you think, well, archaeologists have an opinion. I thought it would be a good idea if we actually decided to seek out sort of a wider view, just in case I was totally wrong. Uh, and uh, good for them, the CIFA responded, and, and we uh, put together a little survey, which we uh, put out in August and ran through till the end of October, uh, just asking archaeologists at all different levels, students through to yeah, grizzled old lags, 30 years plus, uh, what their views were on Brexit and how they thought that uh, Brexit would um, impact upon them. And um, we will be saying more about this at the IFA conference next year, Newcastle, April. So um, I don't want to go into too many details now, but I will just give you some of the preliminary findings. Um, there were six main reasons, that, that I've called them reasons for concern, but six main reasons that uh, were stated in these replies. Uh, I mean, there were lots and lots of reasons, but these are the ones that, that cropped up most frequently. Um, and you can read through the list. Basically, you know, freedom of movement uh, was, was the one that way and above everything else um, shone out. And then obviously, um, you know, all of the associated things with collaborative projects, uh, the status of academia, uh, standards and professionalism, heritage, and environmental legislation, uh, wages, terms, and conditions, etc., etc. Um, the way that we designed this survey was that uh, 22 questions, uh, 20 questions were basically there to kind of establish a profile of the person that was responding. So asking, you know, pertinent questions like, uh, you know, do you have a financial interest in this? Do you have, uh, you know, relatives, family involved? Is this? Um, uh, you know, but the last two questions, um, as I mentioned earlier, were just asking people, um, what's your view on Brexit and how did um, it impact? And um, I was saying myself, I, I already had in my mind what I thought all of the replies were going to be. Uh, and here's just some examples. Um, and, and these are, as I say, my, my, th this fitted exactly with what I thought the, uh, the answers were going to be. You know, it's a disaster, appalled, unmitigated tragedy, uh, yada, yada, yada. Um, what I wasn't quite prepared for uh, was for some of the replies uh, on the, let's say, taking an opposite view. Uh, and here's a few examples of those. Um, yeah, I've known archaeologists for a long time. I've worked nearly 40 years as an archaeologist. and. Um, I have never heard uh, anyone express to my face that uh, they had difficulty in working with colleagues from another country, uh, that somehow they felt that the blame for all of the poor conditions, wage levels uh, in archaeology could put down to uh, an influx of, of people from outside the UK. But um, you know, these are some of the views which were expressed. Uh, what was more worrying to me was we had 310 replies to the survey and at least 30 of them, so 10% roughly, expressed these kind of views. Um, and um, the point, I, I've written a little sort of summary of this uh, survey for IFA 
And one of the conclusions that I've come to is that um, we, we can't ignore this. Uh, I'm not saying that the IFA should be pandering to these views, but it certainly struck me that some of these views are clearly quite strongly held and sort of fairly well articulated, and uh, the IFA at its peril would, uh, would do itself a disservice if it totally ignored them. Um, so that's the survey, and we'll come back to that maybe later. And as I say, we'll be going into it in more detail next April at the, uh, at the IFA conference. But um, I, I looked around to see if I could find uh, some more views on, uh, on this kind of situation. And, um, and um, I came across this. Um, I've taken out a missing word here because uh, it's not particularly pertinent, but, but I will come back to it. Um, uh, because it seemed to me that uh, this summarised um, very accurately the, the, the same situation that we found ourselves in after the 23rd of June. Um, you know who, who it was that um, was being blamed, and, and you know for the, for the full stop, you can, sorry for the question mark, you can introduce whatever word you want. Uh, you know, immigrants, migrants, refugees, uh, whatever. Um, the actual word that was there originally was um, Irish, um, because this is a view which was actually expressed 150 years ago, and some of you might have guessed who by. Um, he was talking about uh, a situation that existed in 1860, 1870, where uh, in, this yeah, in this country uh, we were blaming uh, the Irish for coming over here stealing our jobs, despite the fact that they were building the railways for us, creating infrastructure. The reason they were here, a lot of them, was because of the situation in Ireland following the famine, where basically they were both economic and uh, social refugees, um, yada yada. But um, Marx also went on to say this, uh, this is the end of this letter to Siegfried Meyer, um, this antagonism is uh, artificially kept alive and uh, intensified by the press, the pulpit, the comic papers, in short, by all the means of disposal of the ruling classes. Uh, which again, I think, uh, you know, if you were to substitute uh, Daily Mail for the comic papers, uh, would also be pretty accurate to, to describe the situation now. So I don't have a remedy. But I do have um, some suggestions. Um, I think there are things that uh, we can do as archaeologists to respond to this situation. Um, firstly, we have to recognise that there's nothing new under the sun. Brexit and the fallout from Brexit clearly fit with um, sort of Marx's view of 150 years ago. Um, it's accurate to claim, I think, that at least one side of the political divide clearly recognised the truth of uh, Marx's analysis. Unfortunately, the side I support has spent most of the past 50 years ignoring it. Um, Brexit is a consequence of this. We might be reluctant to describe it in this day and age as class struggle, but if it looks like Boris, it walks like Boris, and it talks like Boris, then you can draw your own conclusions. Where we can usefully spend our time um, learning is, is how best to respond to this situation. I think there's a need for unity and clarity to understand the problem, uh, but not necessarily to be drawn into the mess by validating the attack. Um, I'm frankly embarrassed by fellow members of the Labour Party who push the line that our response to UKIP should be to adopt UKIP policy. Um, I don't agree with that. I think we need to be self-critical, and it would help if the archaeology profession would recognise that it stands on dodgy ground with regard to diversity and equality of uh, opportunity in all of our different spheres of activity. The Brexit issues, although of immediate concern, um, should not be seen as separate or distinct from other issues affecting equality and diversity in our profession. There is no place for scapegoats in archaeology, but there is plenty of room for improvement. We need to support and promote the institutions of our discipline if we don't like them, change them to suit our needs and purpose. We also need to be confident in promoting positive views on equality and diversity and not being afraid to confront colleagues who demur. Thirdly, we need to support and promote the institutions and if we don't like them, change them to suit our needs and purpose. We need to defend our need for academic archaeology as much as we campaign for the rights of vocational archaeologists. 
Personally, I see this as part of a wider struggle for access to education. Um, for it to be free at the point of entry, we should have a national education service in the same way as we have a national health service. Um, and I believe that we need to engage in a political struggle um, to achieve that end. Um, returning specifically to Brexit, um, the letter on the left is the sorry statement that uh, the CIFA, I, CIFA issued in July um, from whence our um, survey sprung. And obviously the CIFA is at the moment going through the process of establishing its view on Brexit. So to be able to campaign, it hopes, um, uh, towards uh, an end which will best represent um, archaeologists in this country. Uh, the response on the right um, is from the staff of Sheffield University, which came out about the same time, within a couple of weeks, and I think is um, a really nice example of, of a local view that, um, you know, people have sat down, got together a view, promoted a view that they weren't going to stand for some of the um, shit that was being pushed around regarding, um, you know, what caused Brexit and how people ought to respond. And I hope at least uh, uh, some of the students at Sheffield took comfort from that, that the, the staff weren't going to um, end up sort of uh, pandering to some of these views. Um, the very last point that I want to make is that uh, this is an elephant in the room, but um, you know, people shouldn't be afraid to mention that you know, something stinks here. Um, I, I think we are all concerned that, um, you know, with democracy in its kind of wider sense, but we shouldn't be afraid just because if you don't feel yourself uh, in the majority view on this that you actually stop talking about it. And I think it's quite important that for all aspects of our work, and I'm sure this will crop up at more and more conferences over the next year and a couple of years or so, that we should actually say that there is a view on Brexit, which is that one, it isn't such a, a great idea, and that two, it would be something which is adverse to our, our careers and to our um, standards of, of professionalism and, and learning. That's it. Thanks. Thanks.